Hello everyone, we are going to talk about finding the area of the region that lies inside the circle R equals 3 cosine theta and then outside the cardioid R equals 1 plus cosine theta. So now the graphs for both curves are already shown here. Now we want the portion of the region that is inside the circle which is R equals 3 cosine theta which is this circle right here, this orange circle here and then outside the cardioid, outside the cardioid which is this Y cardioid over here. So what is the region that we are talking about? The region that we are talking about that we are trying to find here is actually this part right here. So this is the, the shaded region. And then of course also this portion right here. So it's still inside the circle. But it's outside the cardioid. Okay, so this is the region that we want. Now, how do we find? this region here. So one thing is that, well first we know that we are going to start tracing the curve from data equals zero. So starting at this point right here and also this point right here, we have data starting from zero for both curves. And then we are going to start tracing the curve this way. Okay, so now what we want to do is that we actually want to see where they intersect, which is this spot right here. And we want to determine what angle at what angle that the two curves intersect. Now, how do we find that? Well, to find that, we can set the two functions equal to each other. So we can set the three cosine data and then the one plus cosine data equal to each other. So we are going to find the intersection. Okay, so let's start writing this down. So to find the intersection, then what we do is that we have three cosine data, and then that is equal to what? One plus cosine data. Okay, and then we try to solve this equation. Now, because there is only uh, the cosine function in the equation, so all we need to do is to isolate the cosine function, so subtract the cosine data from both sides, so we get two cosine data on the left side of the equation, and then we get the one on the right side of the equation. So now isolating the cosine data, we need to divide by two. So we get cosine data is equal to one over two. So now this is actually a really simple equation that we can solve the reference angle that we are getting from this cosine data equals two. I mean, equals one over two is what? It's going to be pi over three. Okay, so that is our reference angle. What about the quadrant that it, it lies in? Now, cosine is positive in quadrant one and quadrant four, but now here we want this intersection point, right? This is in quadrant one, so we are going to look at the, the one in quadrant one. And actually, you also can see that there was one in quadrant four, but we are not going to worry about that because we can take advantage of symmetry when it comes to finding the area. So what we need to do is to just focus on this one to just make things simpler. So uh, what is the angle that is in quadrant one and has a reference angle of power three, which is really just the same thing as the reference angle. So we have the pi over three. Okay, so now this is where the two curves intersect, pi over three. So what really happens is that we are going to go from zero to pi over three, and then we actually get this region cover. Okay, so that is the idea. And then also uh, to find the other side, we just double the area for this top region right here. So I'm just going to label this region I'm just going to change all the color first. Okay, so we are going to, let me just use a different color right here. And so what really happens is that we are going to call this A. Okay, so our goal now is to just find A. And then we'll double the A to get the, the other side also. Okay, and then we are going to get the area for the shaded region. So now what we do is that we are going to start setting up the integral to find the area. So what we do is that we are going to um, use the idea here. So A is going to be what? It's going to be going from the angle theta equals zero and then all the way to what? Pi over three, that's where they intersect. So pi over three. And then now the idea is actually that we have the one half and then times the outer curve square and then minus the inner curve. Actually, that should be an R, right? So inner curve. And then D data. So that is the idea. That is the formula that we're gonna use. So 
which one is the outer curve, which one is the inner curve. Okay, so the idea is that if you just pick a point somewhere here, let's say we pick a point here and then another point here so that they have the same angle, what happens is that you ask yourself, which one is farther away from the origin? And that will give you a larger R. So that will give you the outer curve. And so you can see that that point, this point right here, actually has a uh, larger R because it's farther away from the origin compared to this point. So now what really happens is that we are going to use the circle as the larger curve, the outer curve, and then the cardio as the inner curve. Okay, so now to set this up, we are going to have 0 to power 3, that is still the same thing. Now they both have a 1 half, so we can actually factor that out. And then so now the outer curve, the outer curve is going to be the circle, so the circle is going to be 3 cosine theta, so we get 3 cosine theta here. And then minus, minus the inner curve. The inner curve is going to be what? The inner curve is going to be the, the cardioid. So we are going to have 1 plus cosine theta. Okay, so now we have the integral set up already. So the rest is really just to compute the integral. Okay, so now how do we do this? Here we can pull the 1 half outside the integral, and then we are going to go from 0 to pi over 3, and this one we simplify, so we are going to get 9, and then cosine squared theta. And what about this one? This one we actually need to multiply it out. If we multiply this out, this part right here, if we multiply this out, we are going to get what? 1 plus and then 2 cosine theta and then plus cosine squared theta. Okay, so that is when we expand this because it's the 1 plus cosine theta quantity squared. So now we have a minus sign in front of the whole thing, so we got to distribute the negative to each of those terms. So we are going to get what? Minus 1, okay, and then minus 2 cosine theta and then minus cosine squared theta. So now all of them have the, the opposite sign. And then of course we can just combine like turns, so just continue just quickly. So we get 9 cosine squared theta minus cosine squared theta, we get 8 cosine squared theta, and then copy the rest. So now we have three turns right here, we can split up the integral, so we are going to get 1 over 2, and then this one should be 8 cosine squared theta. And then minus, now minus 1, right? So 1 over 2 integral. And then minus 1 over 2. And then this one has a 2 cosine theta. And so we need to deal with those three integrals here. And actually, I will tell you that this one, we can integrate this one directly, that one also. So the only thing that we need to worry about is actually this one. What about this one? This one, we can actually use the half angle formula. So we can actually turn it into 1 over 2, and then 1 plus cosine of 2 theta. Okay, so that cosine squared theta is actually equal to this. So all we need to do is to turn that into this. And then we can integrate directly because we have cosine to the first power. So we can integrate that cosine to the first power correctly. And you can see that there is a one half over here and then that will that can be canceled with eight. And then also there is another one half here. So if we do some cancellation, eight times one half times another one half, we are going to just get a divided by 2, we get 4, 4 divided by 2 is going to be 2, right? So we are going to get 2. Then the integral from 0 to power 3, and then we are going to get 1 plus cosine of 2 theta. Okay? And then we can actually simplify this one at the same time. So, well, actually, there is nothing to simplify. We can integrate this one immediately. So 1 half, and then integrate the 1, we get theta evaluated from 0 to pi over 3. And then what about this one? This one, the 1 half and the 2 can be canceled. So we only need to worry about integrating the cosine. So we are going to get minus. What is the antiderivative for cosine? So we are going to get sine theta evaluated from 0 to pi over 3. Okay, keep going. Okay, so we have two. And then this one just integrate directly. So we are going to get theta 
integrating the one, okay? And then integrating the cosine of two data, so we are going to get a sine of two data. And then times what, one over two, because of the two in front of the data, so we need to multiply by one half. And so we are going to have the limits here. And then now for this one, we can start plugging in the, the limits, right? So plugging the pi over three, we are going to get uh, pi over six and then plugging the zero, there's zero. So don't need to worry about anymore. And then minus, okay, minus, what about this one? Plug in the pi over three into the sine function. So we are going to get square root of three over two, okay? And then plugging the zero, we just get zero. So that's all we have from those two. And this one, we still need to make the substitution. So just keep going. So we have two, and then plugging the power of three. So we get pi over three here and then plus. Um, so we have one half and then sine of two times pi over three. So two pi over three here. Okay, two power over three. And we are going to still just going to get radical three over two. So we get one over two from here. And then times, what is that? Radical three over two. Okay, and then when we plug in the zero, we get zero here, also get zero here, sine of zero, zero. So we just have this. And then minus pi over six minus radical three over two. Now continue with the calculation. So we distribute the two. So we get two pi over three, and then plus the two and the one half will get canceled. So we get radical three over two, and then minus pi over six, and then minus radical three over two. Okay, so we can cancel those two. And all we need to do is to just take two pi over three minus pi over six. And all we need to do is to get the common denominator or you can just convert them to degree and then do the subtraction. This one is what? This is 120 degree and this one is what? 30 degree. So 120 minus 30 is, is just 90 degree, right? So we are going to get power of two. But if you want, you can actually get the common denominator, which will give us a six at the bottom. So multiply the top and the bottom by two. So we get four pi over six minus pi over six. So we are going to get three pi over six, which is really just pi over two. But that's not the final answer. Remember, this would only give us the A, this half of the shaded region. What do we do? We just need to double that. So final answer, the area of the shaded region is actually just what? It's actually just two times A. And what is that? Two times pi over two? Just get pi. And that's the final answer. Okay, so that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. I will see you next time.